Speaker number three, John McPhail, Great Expectations. Great Expectations, John McPhail. Have you ever had an argument with your spouse or significant other? <laughs> Every hand goes up, not surprised. I was talking to a buddy of mine at lunch the other day, and he was re recalling an argument he was having with his wife. He said, John, it got so bad we stopped talking. The silent treatment. He goes, I remember having to go to bed that night, needing to get up at 5 a.m. for a 7 o'clock flight at work. But I didn't want to break the vow of silence, so I left a note and said, wake me at 5 a.m. The next morning, he woke up, the sun was shining. It was 8 a.m. He jumps out of bed and goes, what is happening? He sees a note next to his bed and says, wake up, it's 5 a.m. and said, Jason, what did you expect? What did you expect? Madam, Mr. Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters, and expectant guests, expectations are a funny thing. At their best, they end in sheer joy. At their worst, they end in utter disappointment. I know a few things about expectations, and I remember when my wife was expecting our second child. All the things that go around with expecting a child. And I remember the call at 9.02 in the morning. John, come home. My water is broken. I remember exactly where I was, standing in the plumbing aisle of Home Depot. <laughs> I jump up. I turn around. I run out of Home Depot. I get into my car holding the plunger. <laughs> I walked out with the plunger. Nobody stopped me. Okay, I'm in my car, I've shoplifted, no big deal. I jumped in my car, I'm driving down by the ground, and I still have the plunger. And it becomes my sword. And I'm on my galleon steed, heading to save my wife. And I'm swerving in and out of battleground, swerving in and out. Half the people are honking, and the other half are telling me I'm number one in their book. <laughs> and of course, I shake my plunger at them. <laughs> Almost into my back door, I'm expecting my wife to be dressed with the bag, my son in daycare, one quarter of a mile away, and with me and my plunger, I'm coming in the door to save the day. Safe to say, I wasn't greeted by that expectation. My son was sitting at the kitchen table, eating pancakes and syrup dripping down. And he said, hey, Dad, Mom's making some noises in the back. And indeed, she was making noises in the back. So I go to the back and I see my wife. A little tear comes down her face. She's half dressed, no bag. She looks at me and she goes, it's my day off. <laughs> and I thought of this, had it not been her day off, since she worked at the post office, she would have given a new meaning to the word special delivery. <laughs> so I expect for us to jump in the car, head to women's hospital, five minutes away. Nope. She wants to go to her hospital in Reedsville. <laughs> Annie Penn Hospital, where her doctor is, where our son was born. It's a 35 minute drive, ladies and gentlemen. I made it in 18 minutes. <laughs> About halfway through that drive, I knew I was in trouble when she turns in the seat, she gets on her knees, and she's clutching the headrest and starts to make labor noises. <laughs> and she is looking at me and I'm looking at her and she goes, why is there a plunger in the back seat? <laughs> I said, honey, I stole it. <laughs> she said, why did you steal it? I'm, like, I'm going to take it back. She says, no, we need it. Well, that's why I grabbed it. <laughs> Going on two 
two wheels. They throw her in the wheelchair. They wheel her into the delivery room on one wheel. They run her in and they're stripping off her clothes. Ladies and gentlemen, this was not a strip tease. This was a strip toss. There was a shoe in the sink, a sock on the bed. There were clothes everywhere. And I remember she sits into the bed and the nurse looks at her and says, don't you push until the midwife comes in. You can't tell a pregnant lady not to push. <laughs> and at that moment, I was having a genuine midwife crisis. <laughs> Funny thing about the midwife, when my wife first told me we're going to go meet the midwife, I had sort of an image of a midwife, a robust woman, in denim, maybe a potato farm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when the door opened and Fran walks in the door, we paint this picture. First thing I saw were black knee-high leather boots and stiletto heels connected to pink fishnet stocking, <laughs> a black mini skirt and a white midriff top with no sleeves. My first thought was, how do you dig potatoes in that? <laughs> but Fran was wonderful, and I never thought she could surprise me twice, but she did. Opens the door, she's wearing the same black skirt, the same top, but it's not meeting. She's eight months pregnant. So her belly comes in the door and I'm thinking, who is going to deliver you? <laughs> During the delivery, everything went well. Eight minutes after the midwife comes in, my daughter was born. And right when that moment was over, I look into the corner and see the two first-year nursing students that got to watch their first delivery. And on the one girl's face was confusion and horror and trying to figure out the geometry of what she just passed. <laughs> and she turned to her friend and I know I heard her say, I'll never have sex again! <laughs> but as I held my baby, I looked at her and said, Aubrey, I will always bring you joy. I will never bring you disappointment because you, my dear, are my great expectation. <laughs>